Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're doing a bunch of odds and ends. For instance, to start off with, we're building in a permanent tank of sorts for this water geyser. We eventually need to get rid of this whole ad hoc water area here. We're going to be removing this metal refinery situation here. And that's because of our wonderful industrial sauna is finally starting to come back online. And we're building that water tank because we really need to start clearing this whole area out. We've gotten rid of most of the ice down here. You can see that this water is 23 degrees. So it'd be good to have a nice clean area to be able to dump all this clean water and keep it separated because it is 95 degrees coming out of that vent. And we'll probably start by pumping all this water into this tank. Now I know this tank is not big enough, but we can scale it up as we need. And in sort of that same fashion of clearing out this whole area that we're eventually going to have to dig all out, there's a lot of great resources in places like this. For instance, there's 72 sleet wheat grain sitting in this one stack. That's a lot of sleet wheat. But there's also plenty to do on Smeriel. Right now, we only have three duplicates on Smeriel, and they're not able to keep up with all the tasks. For one, they're creating a bunch of these beautiful bog buckets. But for two, there's a couple of geysers on here that we want to be able to crack into and start utilizing. Here's one cool slush geyser. And in the top left of the map, there's a cool salt slush geyser. At a minimum, we can send all this cool salt slush home and then use this cool slush geyser to both send more water home and feed all the bog buckets. Not to mention, who knows what else is on this colony that we could exploit. Not to mention, who knows what else is hidden on this planetoid that we could use, whether it be water or food. So we're going to start by opening up the bedroom area. We're going to be building this liquid pump. We're going to be building a lot more rooms. And right now, we're using a sublimation station to provide oxygen. Well, our wonderful sublimation station can only produce 660 grams of oxygen per second. And that's only if it's running flat out. And you can see, sometimes it gets max gas pressure. So we need to figure out that. Not to mention... It runs on polluted dirt. So this isn't going to be a forever sort of situation. So the faster we can make this into a real colony with some real oxygen production, the faster we'll be able to assist all the efforts going on our main planetoid. Our first dupe of the episode was an easy pick because they're a new friend. Yes, folks, it's a pay. This pay has suit wearing, ranching, and digging, although they cannot do any building errands. But they do start with super hard digging. Welcome to the colony, dupe 119, Ganymed FE. Our next dupe is not necessarily a new dupe, but they are highlighting some of the new graphics. Marie here is buff, and she enjoys a good flex in the mirror. They're also good at operating, and they're biohazardous. Welcome to dupe number 120, Tornado. Meanwhile, we've been steadily knocking out research here in Tier 4s and Tier 5 by utilizing all those data banks. Victor Neves brought us back on the SS Defensive Gemini L. Wonderful name. So it's about time that we actually send them back up. We're loaded up with plenty of plastic, plenty of algae to keep this oxygen diffuser going, and we've even upgraded it with an air filtration system. Yes, we are paying the power cost on an air filtration system. And the way the system works is pretty easy. We have a gas pump here. It'll siphon off carbon dioxide in sort of a cross pattern here. So it's not 100% perfect because it's not going to get all the carbon dioxide here at the very bottom. I tried playing around with it for a few minutes, but since we just baked it into our existing design, I couldn't get this gas pump any lower. But this is fine because it'll keep the carbon dioxide from spreading further up. And to save on the power cost, we actually have a timer sensor connected to the mini gas pump. The timer sensors allows that gas pump to only activate for 50 seconds out of the entire cycle. But when it does, it'll siphon any sort of carbon dioxide or oxygen into this gas filter. All the oxygen will go up through this gas vent. All the carbon dioxide will go through this long snaky pattern. Now, while our adorable tiny rocket is landed, all that carbon dioxide will just get vented here. While it's in space though, it'll just stockpile through here until it lands and once again it'll then be vented into the vacuum of space. And that's the reason why we have this long snaky pipe run. Because while we're in space, none of the carbon dioxide can leave the rocket, so it'll get stored up in all of these pipes. Plenty of pipes for standard mission. So with that, I think it's time to send old Victor Nevez back out to space to collect more data banks. So here's the general idea. We're going to have six cots in here. I figure six is going to be good. 
If we get this sublimation station running right, which I have another idea to try to make sure it doesn't hit max gas pressure so much, so we should be able to provide oxygen for six duplicates. In the meantime, until we actually get those geysers and vents active, then we'll take those six duplicates, put them on three different schedules so they can all share two lavatories, and I think we're going to be able to make some progress over here with the additional help of four more duplicates. So here's the new sublimation station setup. I think it has a couple of advantages. Instead of all the oxygen just being flushed out this way when we had it bricked up the top, now the oxygen can sort of escape out to the top and to the left. Now you could also put a couple of solid bricks here, but quite frankly, I would be concerned about carbon dioxide and everything slipping down through here and then getting stuck. Yeah, it'd be kind of tough because the oxygen pressure here is designed to be so much more than any sort of carbon dioxide to where the carbon dioxide would slip around, but that's not always how it works. Now, remember when we're talking about the sublimation station, it can produce up to 660 grams per second of polluted oxygen, which is enough to provide oxygen for six dupes. Here we are with a barracks that can hold six dupes. Now, the sublimation station takes polluted dirt and turns it into polluted oxygen. Right now, by itself, we have 58 tons of polluted dirt. And that's not including all the other polluted dirt that we're going to find on the rest of this colony. Now, the sublimation station does take one kilo of polluted dirt per second, so that's a little over half a ton per cycle. But lucky for us, we still also have 50 tons of polluted mud. But that's where our friend the sludge press is going to come into play. We're going to be able to take all of the mud on this colony, separate it out, and when we do that using regular mud, we're given dirt and water back, and when we do that with polluted mud, we're given polluted dirt back along with valuable polluted water that we can then continue feeding to our bog buckets. Now that's obviously not infinitely sustainable as well because, well, mud is not infinitely sustainable. But when we take a look at our materials overlay over on organic, you can see how much this lights up. For instance, all of this is polluted dirt. All of the dark spots our mud. So we have plenty of other resources to be able to take advantage of to get us up to the 150 dupe mark. But you may also notice that over on Smeriel, the three dupes are not able to keep up with all these tasks. Grignac and Alex So spend a lot of their time cooking bog buckets. And then we have John Mann who spends a lot of time running on the wheel. Plus we have no carbon dioxide sink yet, so we have a lot of work on this colony today. But I think it starts with bringing over three more dupes. Now, I'm not worried about feeding all three dupes because we have all these bog buckets. And remember, we have this fridge set to 12 kilos. So it's always going to keep 12 kilos worth of food in the refrigerator with all the excess going over to the supply teleporter input to help out our primary colony. So we don't have to worry about feeding all six dupes. We don't have to worry about the oxygen from all six dupes. So I think we're pretty much prepared to bring in more dupes. Now, unfortunately, the teleporter transmitter can only send a dupe every few cycles because it's got to recharge up using its internal power systems. You can't just plug more power into it. But now we have to look and decide, OK, which dupes are we sending over there? Well, we need some good all around dupes who are good at a bunch of things. And it just so happens that I slighted duplicate number 19 Lindsay Grossman. They were supposed to be, well, at least that's what I had said, our first pilot. Well, you know that honor went to Victor Neves. So I think we're going to let Lindsay be the first one to go over there in our sort of reinforcement party. Remember, when you are waiting for your duplicates, don't just assign them to the teleporter and walk away because they can suffocate inside this teleporter. Here comes Lindsay now, and before they suffocate, we'll go ahead and send them over. And with Lindsay comfortable and safe over here on Smeriel, we can go back to our primary colony and you can see that it's recharging. And if you highlight over the recharging tooltip, you can see it takes five cycles to recharge. So it's going to be a little while before we can get the other two duplicates over there. That is unless we build a mini pod and print them out over here, which I think is not a bad idea. The only thing we're missing out is the advantage of having a fully trained up dupe but it would definitely save us some time on this colony by having the additional dupe labor quicker. Now, when you place down your mini pod, it won't be able to print until you actually activate it. So make sure you activate it and you can even do an additional inspection where we are able to discover a new database entry. Now, once you spend as much time as I have in the game, you've read all the database entries, but they're still kind of fun. Unless, of course, it's a brand new database entry that just got inputted during the last update, which in this case, it was. 
And here goes Greg Nat activating the mini pod by hitting a couple of buttons and using the levers. Isn't science grand? Now standard, I've been grouping all the duplicate prints into three or four, and that way I can show you them all at once. But because we're going to be printing them out to come over to Smeriel, we're just going to highlight them as they come out. So we can see what kind of new talent we get on the new colony. In this case, we're taking this Nisbet, who is decent at cooking and farming. Yes, I know we already have a couple of cooks in farming, but that's what this whole colony is about, is providing food for the primary colony. So it works. And it's kind of handy that with the farming, they also have green thumb. Now, White Marble 97 requested to be dupe number 120. Unfortunately, that went to Tornado, so I suppose 121 is the next best thing, right? Welcome to dupe number 121, White Marble 97. Now, because White Marble is going to be a dedicated farmer, I think we can finally make Grignac our dedicated cook. So that means we need to probably skill scrub Alex So to get back the points that they had in cooking. But because of Alex So's traits, we're not actually going to put them back into farming because they don't love farming either. They like critter ranching. We don't have any critters over here quite yet, but they do have improved carry. So it looks like we just found Smuriel's pick them up and set them down dupe. Now of particular concern here is we're wasting a lot of time by climbing up these normal ladders to get all the way to this grill. So we have a couple of options here. We could move the grill down here and co-locate it with the rest of the colony, or we can add a fire pole here. And I think we're actually just going to do both. We're going to move the grill somewhere around here. That way, it's a short run from all the block buckets to the grill. And then we're going to add our fire pole anyway, so that way the dupes can get up and down a lot quicker. And the next dupe for Smuriel is a pretty good one, save one point. Building, operating, supplying, and hard digging. Like, that's a smorgasbord of great skills. Unfortunately, they have a bottomless stomach. But considering the other options, I think... Duplicate number 122, Maria Alejandro, is going to be a great addition to Smuriel. In fact, Maria is probably going to be one of the better mechatronics engineers of the two colonies. They have both building and an interest in every single trait that's required to be a good mechatronics engineer. Meanwhile, back on our home colony, you can see we are running low on calories. I mean, really low, considering we consume 116,000 calories per day. It's getting a little tight. And the reason why is because we're down to less than a ton of slime. We've gutted most of this. Oh, wait. Look, there's still a couple more pieces here. <laughs> but we ran out before we went into that biome. And so a lot of our mushrooms ended up being stifled. Luckily, we have about 40 tons of dirt. And that's because we've cleaned out pretty much the entire space biome, getting all the regolith, dirt, and other minerals. Unfortunately, temperature is somewhat of an issue. Remember, your mealwoods won't grow in anything over 30 degrees or under 10 degrees. So having available places to be able to plant our emergency mealwood is a little bit dicey. The great news is Smeriel's filled with dirt. Right now, we have 55 and a half tons sitting on the colony, and we're still sending some more back home. I think mealwood's going to be that emergency crop that's going to get us to 150 dupes. I mean, look at all the dirt around here. It's beautiful. Not to mention, once our sludge press is complete, we're going to be able to take all that mud and turn it into dirt as well. Our next dupe is a rocketry builder who starts with mechatronics engineering and grease monkey. Unfortunately, we're paying a heavy cost for this one because they're also a mouth breather. Wasn't excited about this, but considering the positives we get and the other dupe was just not great either, I figured it's a good wash. Welcome to dupe number 123. Nepo Damos. Our next dupe's a decorating operator with gourmet and a small bladder. The other dupes in that printing pod didn't stand a chance because this is a wonderful pay. Welcome to dupe number 124 and show guru. Our next dupe is a stinky living their best life. They're a supplying researching digger with mole hands and just a touch of biohazardous. Welcome to the colony dupe number 125, Havoc. So here's our final sludge press setup. We have the sludge press here, which is going to take that mud, bring it to dirt and water, and the same thing from polluted mud to polluted dirt and polluted water. Well, since we're only using one sludge press to process both polluted and non-polluted materials, we have it going through this beautiful liquid filter. Liquid filter is set to send all the polluted water right back through our original chain that is also connected to our toilets, which is then connected to all these buffer tanks, 
which is feeding all the bog buckets. Now the advantage is this is going to give us a lot of polluted water. And when you combine it with all the existing sources of polluted water, we have all the existing little pockets. I mean, there's several up here. Oh, look, there's more slime too. And taking into account that somewhere on this map is a cool slush geyser or two, we have plenty of polluted water to feed all these bog buckets. And since we also know that we have plenty of water here to make it to 150 duplicates, especially considering our water towers are chock full, I'm also throwing caution to the wind and starting to grow some beautiful berry blossoms over here as well. Yay! With just the addition of a few more mealwood plants, we're back up over 250,000 calories, and that number is only climbing. And all that is possible because of all the materials we're going to be able to harvest from Smeriel. Now, granted, none of this is infinitely sustainable at this point, but for instance, Maria here, throwing a bunch of polluted mud into the sludge press, provides the polluted water for the bog buckets, but also more polluted dirt for our sublimation station. So one way to look at it is all the mud that's available on this planetoid feeds and provides oxygen for duplicates. So maybe those folks who ate mud as a kid knew what they were doing after all. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Being that we're at 125 dupes, we're not going to have very much longer in this series. Because once again, as soon as we get to 150 duplicates, it's going to be save, new game, and then where do we go? That's where I want to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what you think our next series should be. I had a good time in today's episode. I hope you did too. And I'll talk to you soon.